Hello everybody, this is John from More Jeepney and we are here to try and make a battle report for Bushido Miniature Game. It is my Ito clan versus Irwin's prefecture slash Ronin team. Over here I have uh, my guys, four guys, four versus four, this is about 66 rice. I have uh, Itsunagi, my main guy, 25 rice points, uh, melee fighter with my armored samurai Masunagi I have a Shugenjo over here or Shasai uh, she casts uh, poison spells uh, that is Sakura and my regular dude here which is a Temple Bushi over at his side he will have his three Imperial sisters starting with Yiji armed with the dual swords the sister with the bow Yanjing and the sister with the spear and her name is Shi XI and over here is the deadly Grey Pilgrim. Now they both have uh, long weapons, so they have reach. They should be striking first unless my guys trigger their lightning reflexes, which is an Ito clan trait. So I'll be using uh, red and grey dice. Red will be my attack dice, grey will be my defense dice, and Erwin will also be using red for his attack and white for his defense. This is our terrain over here. We're putting our Minka houses in place. Just a simple uh, non-tournament objective. We have a control zone over here. And inside the Minka B house, we have the idol that you have to pray to and make it face your side so that you will earn points. And so we have to turn it over to the neutral side over there. Okay, so scoring is at the end of turn two. Turn 4 and turn 6. So for deployment, I deploy the Temple Bushi here. I have Sakura over here, Masunagi. And here at the right side, I have Itsunagi. Over at his side, we have the three sisters there. The girl with the bow being here, the girl with the sword, the girl with the spear. And the deadly Grey Pilgrim is over here. They normally work best if within three inches of each other. So that's why they are deployed there. So we'll roll now for initiative. I have a four and he gets a one. Okay, so I will opt. Well, should I go first? Okay, I'll make Erwin go first. Okay, for turn one, the Grey Pilgrim ran over here towards the door to that objective. I run my Temple Bushi over here to reflect that uh, movement and then he moved the sister with the two swords and then I uh, sorry he ran sister with the two swords I ran with Sakura over here at the corner next was the girl with the spear also ran forward and now I'm going to use her feet and try to uh, poison this girl over there so Sakura's psychic venom has a range of eight we will see if we can reach 8. Yes, reaches 8. And we do the opposed key test. I have 2 dice plus 1. And Erwin has 2 key for her. Dito lang your roll para dito. And I have a 6, I have a six 7, 8. He rolls 2 ones which count as a 0. I spent 2 key there. So she gets 2 poison, 2 counter. So a total of 4 poison. After poisoning one sister, it is now Erwin's turn. You can talk, Erwin. <laughs> yeah, it moves uh, moves the bow sister up uh, just to walk. She is shooting my. Uh, yeah, go ahead. That's at nine inches. Yes, nine inches is uh, probably second the range second band, range so band. that's five to hit. Walked, 6 to hit, behind cover, 7 to hit. Okay, go ahead, roll. Need 7s so on 3 dice. Uh, this is hot. Okay, re-roll. Okay, so uh, 4. Okay, so we check the bow and she has Brutal 1. Brutal 1 adds 1 to the result, but 1 counts as a 0. This is 4. Uh, supporting dice 5 plus 1 is 6 so fails to hit on the 7 oh, by the way since I uh, poisoned this a while ago should not have an action token anymore
So the Grey Pilgrim spends an activation token and goes base to base. I assume base to base. It yes. should be base to base. Yes. base, to base. It's not base to base there. It's gotta so that it's clear. So base to base to the idol, ready to pray for it next turn. I just run my big boy Itsunagi up towards the objective zone. Yanjing, the girl with the bow, spends her last activation to reload her bow. Okay, so let's see what Matsunagi can do. I will activate Matsunagi, 5 inch walk, and try to melee attack the poisoned spear girl. So let's do that now. Let's uh, not remove the tokens yet. Moves forward. And I've now engaged her in uh, melee. Okay, so what happened here is one of the sisters, the one with the two swords, used their special sister ability, Sister Sakor. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but she spent an activation and two key, that is an instant activation. What happens is if someone uh, goes into base to base with a friendly sister, they can move in and try to gang Okay, up. for this melee sequence, this is what happens. Uh, they gang up on me. She has spear, which gives her initiative because she has reach, but I spend my only uh, two key, giving him lightning reflexes, so I have initiative. So this uh, melee exchange is between Matsunagi and she, the girl with the spear. So we reveal now our dice. Okay. So I go one on attack, one on defense, and Erin goes all on defense. So let, why is it that way? So remember, running and ganging up reduces my dice, so I only have two. Uh, she did run. She has three. She ran, so she now only has two. So let's go and see what happens to the rolls. Double ones, none on defense. I roll four on attack, so I do a base damage of four. Base damage of four. Roll two d6. And I roll a nine. He has a uh, sword plus two, so 10, 11. 11 deals two damage. So I deal a total of 6 damage. I didn't actually need the poison anymore. She is uh, outright killed. So goodbye, uh, Mrs. She over there. She's gone. So of course, end of activation. That removes my activation token. Now the sister with the two swords there has her back turned. And I will take advantage of that using Itsunagi. I will use uh, one activation and move five inches and make a surprise attack against her and she's forced to uh, face my uh, direction now okay so I have initiative I am striking uh, I will allot everything on attack I had four dice but I ran so that reduces my dice to uh, three dice I'm not spending any key on any special abilities or adding anything uh, the sister only has one. She has original of three. She is ganged up two. She is exhausted one. And surprise attack zero, but you roll a minimum of one. So my three dice versus Irwin's uh, one dice. So here we go. Oh, she, she's got a six. I only have a three, but I have pro as melee. So I can reroll this. I have a five. I have a 6, it's tied at 6, okay, this is a 0, does not count, but if I allot all my dice on attack, his special ability is he adds 1, because he's brutal, so I become a 7, so that means I am 1 up, so I deal 1 damage, plus the damage table modifier, which is a 9, sword plus 1, uh, which is a 10, so I deal a total of 2 damage to her, so she gets two damage tokens over there and Itsunagi is now uh, exhausted so for my last activation I just uh, moved my temple bushi in, into there to contest the objective and maybe something for the gray pilgrim to kill so that is the last activation token we are now going into round two Round two, initiative roll. I have a three, he has a five, he goes first. Okay, I forgot that each turn uh, my figure here provides uh, Blood of Orochi, which allows me to put a poison token on uh, my weapon. So let's just, say, let's just say that for the first turn, uh, 
I place a token on him. And now for this turn, I'll put a token on my Temple Bushi over here. So that fixes So it. Irwin activates and decides to use her uh, bow to try to hit uh, Itsunagi. Uh, that's short range, so she needs four. I have range defense one, she needs five. Uh, I'm at base contact with the sister, but the special ability of the sister is that they don't count as being in uh, base contact for the purposes of ranged attack, that is their ability. So he will be rolling three dice, spends an activation token to increase his dice to four, so he will need a five to hit Itsunagi. Okay, go ahead. Uh, rolls a six, and that is a seven there, two ones. So base damage of two, roll your damage modifier. And that is a 9, so that is plus 1. By the way, uh, Brutal, her bow has Brutal, so 3 plus 1, 4. That drops him to 1. Yeah, scratch that. A correction, he spent key to increase his uh, uh, dice to 4, not activation. 1 activation to shoot. Okay, for my activation, I'm going to use Itsunagi. I'm going to try to strike her. Uh, he didn't use any key for any abilities. Uh, she has base of three, but currently ganged up, so we'll have only two. Uh, I have declared uh, I will be using feint, so it allows me to do a uh, feint attack, and what I can do is uh, re-roll his highest defense die, if ever his defense die, and I will declare this. Okay, and I will do put all my dice on that. Okay, so we'll make our roll. I do all attack. And combo attack. And what are you doing, Erwin? All defense. All defense. So here we go. So he has a five and a one. He can reroll. He can reroll the one. I'll reroll my one. Both of them have uh, melee expertise. Okay. So he has a five, six. I have a five, six, seven, uh, plus one because I'm brutal. So base damage of three because I'm an eight. Oh, so, sorry, 8, so base damage of 2, plus 2d6, which is a 12, so that pretty much kills her, so I deal 6 damage outright, that doesn't even include any additional attacks from my combo attack, but the first strike is enough to take her down, so, sorry, uh, what's her name? Yiji, Yiji is killed. And that, of course, removes an activation token. Okay, so it's Erwin's turn, and one sister left, and what are you going to do? Okay, moving into melee. Don't remove the token yet, so we know that she is not exhausted. I am forced to now turn and face you there. As the defending player, uh, what do I do? Do I trigger lightning reflexes? Do I attack? Uh, okay, let's do something different. I will spend uh, two key. That means I have now only two left and I will trigger my parry, umbrella block ability, increase my defense uh, by one. Uh, are you uh, spending any key? Uh, no. Not spending any key on anything? Okay. So for my hidden trigger, I will going to do this and I'm going to do uh, this one. Okay. So what do we have? I have uh, one attack, three defense, and I'm declaring my counter strike defense. And what have you? One attack and two defense. Okay, so you're striking first, so let's roll. Let's see what happens. I have, uh, can you put your dice here? So he's striking first. Okay, he's got four attack. Then I have, uh, this is my defense, so I have uh, seven. This one counts as a zero, and my attack will obviously not get through that. So what I will do is I'll use my uh, uh, pro ability and reroll this. See if I can get anything better. Yes, so six, seven, eight for my defense, and I am four up. And since I have uh, declared parry, which increases my defense, I am now 5 up. Okay, 5 up. So I block and this one triggers. What does this do? If this defense is successful and the attack 
the attacker allocated any attack, uh, any dice to the attack, then deduct two from the defense, and that becomes my attack. So I am up five, minus two, three. So I counter, counter attack you with three damage plus modifier roll, which is a six plus my sword plus one, seven. So I simply deal three damage as a counter attack to the sister there. And for my attack dice, attack but blocked by the sister. I was hoping this would actually finish her off, but dealing three damage isn't so bad. And because both uh, engage in a melee exchange, both figures get uh, reduced an activation counter, and they are now both exhausted. I now activate Sakura, and I'm going to run her this way towards that zone, but before that, I'm going to use her channel ability and transfer two key to the temple bushi here who is facing off against her and he will desperately need those key. So transfer two key and then spend the token and yeah, I'll just run uh, that way over there. So run token, remaining token, and he gets plus two key. So total of four key now on that guy. And Erwin is going to spend a token and will use the Grey Pilgrim's Call Lightning ability and try to hit my Temple Bushi with a Lightning Strike. That is range 2, first range band. He will need a 4 to hit on 3 dice. 4 to hit on 3 dice. Let's see what will happen there. 4, 5, 6. So base damage of 2. Uh, Call Lightning has a plus 1 to the damage modifier. So go ahead. So we're doing 2 damage. What was that? Six and a four. Six and a four, ten, eleven. So that's a total of another two damage. So four damage to the temple bushi. He has survived, but he is down to one. So I think he's going to die soon. I'll just spend a token and give him something to worry about. Let's turn this Buddha towards my. So if this is still facing me at the end of the turn, I earn a point. So what is he going to do now? Is he going to attack me? or turn that Buddha back. And he spends a token and brings this back to neutral. And just to irritate him, I will spend the token and face it back my way. Yeah, take that for being such an evil gray pilgrim over there. All right, so I think I out-activated him on that one and it's his turn, but he has no more uh, activations left Okay, so let's do this. Let's show you this. So instead of spending one, you can spend two and make a charge. So I will charge this way, ganging up on that bow girl. So what that happens now, if I do make a successful attack, my damage will be uh, plus two on my modifier roll because it is a charge and not just a regular attack. Okay, so he doesn't have anything uh, to increase his initiative, so I am striking her and I'm going to do, of course, that one. And Erwin, what are you going to do? All on defense, he's down to one dice because she has a base of three. Ganged up, minus one. Exhausted, minus one. Down to one. Okay, so let's see the rolls. Here we go. Okay, he rolls a uh, five over there. I have a uh, pro is melee, so I'm going to roll this one. And becomes a two so supporting dice of this two five is to five but I am up to so two dice two damage plus 11 which is a plus one but I uh, actually plus two but my charge puts me at plus three so that's a total of five damage she has three uh, wounds already I think she's down to two I believe mm -hmm. Down to two, so yeah, she's killed. So that area is pretty much mine there. But I have a problem here. However, I'm going to earn points uh, at the end of turn two for this. So for uh, the end, I'm just going to pass. So I earn one, uh, I get this one, I get this one. I have uh, one point for this turn. And we're now going into turn three. Okay, so uh, Erwin realizing that he should have just uh, engaged me a while ago so I can't turn the Buddha now uh, does not repeat uh, that error and now engages me in melee. So 
I turn to face him and we enter a melee exchange. Okay, so what I'm doing with the Temple Bushi is I am uh, going to spend three of my key and I will increase my dice from three to four and I'm going to do this and hopefully this one saves me and this one does uh, something very important there. Erwin has spent key, I believe, to increase his melee to four. Okay? And what dice a lot meant all on attack. Okay, so let's see what happens in the die rolls here. Let's have a roll. My defense is six, seven, and eight. His attack is five plus two supporting six, seven. So I actually win, but I believe, uh, does she have any rerolls? No, she does not have any rerolls. So I'm actually successful in my defense. If I got that right, Let's, we'll, we'll check it out first. Okay, so we check. She doesn't have any uh, reroll abilities. So seven is to my lucky roll of eight. So I successfully defend. And since he does not have any defense dice and I have my soul attack dice, this pushes through. She does have dodge, but Erwin does not want to risk this one becoming higher, so keeps it at three. And I roll now my uh, modifier. So a four is actually a minus one, so I deal two damage. So she gets two damage. Okay, and I have a uh, poison token there. So she gets one poison token and she will be dealt one damage at the end of the turn. And of course, since I was attacked, melee exchange, my token is removed. So for my activation, I think my Temple Bushi there needs help. I get Masunagi to run towards the door there and hopefully uh, engage the Grey Pilgrim. Okay, so the Grey Pilgrim spends its last uh, activation to try to get rid of my Temple Bushi. I don't have enough key to increase anything, so I don't feel lucky now. I'll just go all like this. And he's spending also nothing. And he's just going all on attack. Okay, so we'll see what happens. I have a 5, 6. Yes, a 5, 6. So he's dealing 0 damage. So he has to roll his modifier. You have to roll your modifier first. So 0 damage plus your 2d6 modifier. And the plus one of the spear actually adds to that modifier. So that is a seven, uh, eight, because of plus one, eight does zero. So, who I survived, okay? He survived that uh, exchange. And again, uh, melee exchange, tokens, activation tokens get removed. Okay, so uh, no more activations for the Ronin side and I will try to take uh, advantage now and see if I can overkill uh, the Grey Pilgrim. So I'll make uh, Sakura move 5 inches so she gets right about here. And for that uh, activation, no more run token here, I will channel all my key to Masunagi, bring him up to 6 key. And now him with his 6 key, no activations for the opponent, it's all mine, I will activate him make a surprise gang up attack at the Grey Pilgrim there and hopefully I also have a poison token and hopefully uh, she will get uh, killed. Okay, so here's what happens. I attack her but she actually has initi initiative because she has both lightning strike and reach. So even if I trigger my lightning strike, she will still have reach, she will strike first. And what he does, uh, she now has initiative, so it now falls to me to spend my key first. I spend all my six key, two to give me brutal, and all the four to increase my dice pool to six. And this is how I have allotted my dice. And Erwin, how have you allotted your dice? Two on defense, you make our rolls. Okay, so he has no attack, so no need for me to bother with my defense. He has a 6, I have a 6, I have a 7, and I have Pro S Melee, allows me to reroll this. 8, and I triggered Cleave Brutal, so I have a 9 and 10. So that is difference of 4. 
plus 2d6 uh, that is uh, plus 0 but my sword is plus 2 yes nudachi plus 2 8 9 so I deal a total of uh, 6 damage. damage and I think she was already damaged so I think that kills my last uh, opponent there the gray pilgrim so with that I think that this game goes to the Ito clan uh, for this so uh, I guess Erwin still has to master his sisters and how they work I know they have a command ability which he didn't actually use uh, this game so anyway we're here to learn and I hope you enjoyed this uh, bat trip <laughs>